Hey guys, welcome to this Houdini series on creating a castle wall, a procedural castle wall in, in Houdini. My name's Richard, and over the course of the next couple of videos, we're going to build a, a, a procedural piece of geometry um, to sort of replicate a, a, a old castle wall type thing. Uh, and we're going to add in some lots of parameters that can add noise and add damage and things like that, all in a very procedural way. Okay, so let's just take a look at the tool that we're going to create. I'll just put down an instance of the digital asset that we'll be aiming to make. And it comes in in its default state like this, where we've got some base parameters, you know, we can set the length. We can set the height, we can set the number of brick rows, etc. So you can see we're adding in the flexibility and uh, in a procedural way to make it useful to get a variety of looks very, very quickly, all while maintaining this kind of very standard looking brickwork pattern with a little bit of randomness thrown in as well. So moving on, we've also got some parameters for noise. We can add a mask to where we want that noise to be. Uh, and then we can sort of dial in a little bit of noise onto those bricks just to break it up a little bit and give it a bit of randomness. We can also drop in some jitter to those bricks to push them kind of in and out a little bit. And what else have we got? We can add some cracks based on a probability. So we can start to chip up those bricks and then we can even hack away and reduce that randomly based on the size of those brick chunks if you like okay and once we're happy with the look that we want to use in our scene uh, we can then turn off build mode and what Houdini is going to do is going to go away and process the sort of secondary layers of detail on the asset so the the uh, the chips and the grout and things like that so there you can see we've added some extra layers of noise detail on there just to add a little bit of visual interest okay so I'm going to turn back on build mode temporarily. I'm just going to drop that crack probability down to zero. And as you can see, the asset has got two inputs. This is its default state. If you just wanted a straight wall, you could just dial in the parameters and then import that into your scene. However, we've got a curve input here. So I'm just going to jump across to the top viewport and drop down a NURBS curve very quickly. So if I just randomly draw out a curve, Press enter to finish the tool, plug that in, and it's gone crazy because I picked the wrong viewport. <laughs> Let's try that again in the top view rather than the front view. <laughs> so again, we'll try that, put down a polygon curve this time, why not? And then plug that into the first input of our wall tool. So that's a much more expected result and go back to our and there you can see a very simple brick wall generator with a little bit of noise, a little bit of randomness going on there. Um, and again, we can add some cracks in there. We can start hacking away at the, at, the, at the geometry as well to create an interesting look. Now the second input takes in a piece of reference geometry. So I'm gonna just pass it a sphere. Okay, I'm just gonna crank the size of that sphere. And what this is going to do, it's going to selectively hack away at that wall. So if we plug that into our second input, and just position this sphere where we want to uh, where we want it to be. So I'm just going to grab that and drag it, and you can see our wall's updating now. And it's sort of subtracted those bricks in a kind of logical way that you would expect, whilst maintaining that brick pattern that we sort of worked hard to uh, to produce. Okay, so it drops down as a single digital asset. So you know, if you're building up a scene, you're composing some shot layout or something like that, you can drop down multiple instances of this, change the parameters a little bit, and then get some interesting looks very, very quickly. We've also got some materials and shading properties that we'll take a look at. We can choose to tint these bricks uh, as we see fit. Uh, so we, again, based on a random distribution there, you can see how we can tint those bricks. And also, all of this comes with uh, UV coordinates. Um, so if you wanted to apply some texture maps, we've also separated that out into groups as well. So you can apply that ready for rendering. Okay. If you wanted to use this in games, you could use this as a starting point to build a lower polygon mesh and then bake those map details out. Um, Perhaps we'll take a look at that in a later video series, a bit beyond the scope of this. What I want to focus on in this video series is manipulating attributes uh, on points and primitives and using for each loops, uh, because I think there's quite a lot of value in 
uh, getting a really good understanding of those, especially in Houdini that kind of relies on um, attributes and manipulating them to create geometry and adding variation. So that's the focus on this. Um, so if you want to know more, please do the YouTube stuff. Sorry, I'm very new to this. Uh, do the YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much.